Hey. Oh no, I wasn't ready for this. Hack the planet. Ha oh, wrong stream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Reminds me of so old days. The old days, yeah. The old days. So okay, oh. why did we change our we change our Discord? It's still the BHIS <laughs> logo, but now it's just called Infosec Knowledge Sharing. Yes. Which I feel like I just share memes, not knowledge, but. <laughs> <laughs> but only the memes that are built into Discord. Like, you don't go any custom memes. It's no. just like, you know, whatever memes you got available to you, right? Knowledge yeah. just seems so, like, hoity toity, and I'm like a pleb. Yeah. You will take these memes and you will like them. I don't even. <laughs> I feel like that was like the one thing that every chat app had to get to like succeed. They had to have like some kind of meme generation tool, like you know, Giphy or whatever. Without Discord that. is so sad without the restream bot. Yeah, it's it's not working. Did you break it? Did we find out that it's just a Perl script, like all American? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what what the issue is. Oh gosh. Hmm. Do you think we're gonna get little this? cameras for the dogs so they can have their own like window? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eat except it. the second they think anybody's approaching the house. Oh, there they go. <laughs> That's a just... security feature. Yeah, it is a feature. It's... So wait, nothing happened, right? Nothing happened. No. no. Okay, because I specifically asked the world to not not happen over the weekend. Is there an... is there like a distro list you send that to or what? Uh, yeah, it's just scheduling at world.com. <laughs> Another classic domain. Well, listen, I, I was out there at the San Francisco's where they completely solved cybersecurity with money. That's right. So, what do you do? Much... You shove dollar bills in your Ethernet port, or how yes. does that work? How many blockchain and e or AI technologies did you see? Okay, so blockchain, not a lot. I don't. Even, I can't remember that I saw any uh, AI. You, you would have thought that I've got photos of me with like people in robot suits and they had robots <laughs> literal robots on the floor mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yeah no they're all they're all over it so um, can we all... use ai to do a physical pen test aka just use a roomba to steal their wi-fi password <laughs> or something <laughs> you know what a roomba worked perfect it goes right under the door <laughs> <laughs> that's a fighting door gaps excessive door gaps <laughs> okay but then something goes wrong and it like sends you a notification that it's by a cliff it's like yeah. i'm stuck <laughs> on a cliff <laughs> you're like uh is it a data center cliff yeah. <laughs> is it a fiscal cliff what are you talking about it sends you a picture and it's like the security guy with like his nightstick held up to like the camera. <laughs> yes exactly and it's like unidentified object you're like uh do you want us terminate. to go around this yes. you're like you yes go around that <laughs> go around it do not drive over the security guard. <laughs> do. I don't... And this, what we're talking about right now, everybody, is uh, AI physical pen testing with a uh, Roomba. The, the new thing that's coming out. Come uh, to my fake talk at Deadwood. Yeah. <laughs> talk at Deadwood. There's real talks at Deadwood, and then there's also fake talks, which you got to find the room. It's a fake room. <laughs> it's a, it's... It's only like, you know, your hotel room with a bunch of skittles leading okay, up. Okay, well, it's still fake, Ian, just because it's my hotel. Whoa, room. Echo. No, they don't get to know the fake talk until they show up and they have to figure it out halfway yes. through. <laughs> like, yes. If no, we can do this. We can definitely do this. We can <laughs> do fake, fake talks where I, I give a fake talk about <laughs> how I would do a physical pen test with AI and how what robots I would use. <laughs> <laughs> there's there there's an idea there not just with the talks but for like an after hours thing yeah where you know how to do the slideshow roulette but have people do they do it on npr and it was also like an old show called like to tell the truth and like three people would come out and they'd tell a story and two two of the stories are not true and the, the third one is and you have to figure mm -hmm. out which person is like telling. I could the truth. definitely make a fake war story about how I did a physical pen test with a Roomba. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, but somebody has to have like a like a, a truly ridiculous story to match that that is you, true. Oh yeah. You no, know, you you might be able to do a physical pen test with a Roomba. Just like yeah. get a Just camera a and little, then mail yeah. it to them. Yeah. And let them and start then, using and, it. and strap like put the company logo on it put a little badge on like a broomstick sticking up <laughs> so it like can badge in <laughs> give, it a little, give it a little little mustache that shows up and it's like i am your official cleaning person do not question my intentions here Beepo. it's like in the Beepo. show community where they had like the telepresence uh like the little ipads on um 
like the little iPads on wheels, like the, basically like mm-hmm. tiny little segways, and they were oh, like the driving segway around. with an iPad. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, and then like the one like push tried to push him down the stairs, and it's like he's running into. <laughs> Oh yeah, we could right. do this. I mean, we're it actually happened. This did happen. Oh, we've been ready for a while, Ryan. Just oh, yeah, all right, ready. we're gonna we're gonna roll the finger. Oh, here it comes. Welcome to Black Hills Information Security, talking about the news. We got ransomware roadblocks. We got M1 hacks. Tesla security sucks and leaked credentials all on today's show. And it's not just me, your host, Ralph May. We have an all-star cast. Ryan the Shootist is making us sound good uh, with his new internet, which is ultra fast. We also have Ian, who will probably give us a weather report of what happened at RSA. We have... Serena is with us as well with her cats in the background having fun and Steve the real hacker here hacking it up oh yeah and Corey's here but that doesn't matter anyway <laughs> you can't call it a cre- you can't call it a credential leakage if you just type your credentials in discord on you accident. know what it just fills the headlines Sounds I have good. dogs by the way oh you have dogs I think you have dogs. <laughs> they're two no, dogs they were very dog dude they were like licking her face Mm. You know what? It's because you have cats. And I just assume that everyone else does. That that no, makes it's because we were talking about the grooming place. That's yes, fine. the grooming, and that's literally oh. all I had on my mind because you were talking about like literally shaving a cat when you just wanted. Whoa, to- whoa! It was waxing a cat, and this is <laughs> waxing. Show. Whoa. You're, you're leaking the pre-show secrets, Ralph. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, what, what I love about that is, without context, all people said we were talking about the groomer place, and I'm like, well, no. <laughs> Uh, and three, it is Monday the thirteenth. I'd like to remind everyone of that. Is what? Monday the thirteenth. Haven't you seen that movie? No. Is that like I, opposite it, of Friday the thirteenth? Is uh, that like good yeah. luck day or it's it's like a it's totally not made up. It's real. And it's totally <laughs> not one like a lifetime movie that's totally just copying off of Friday the thirteenth and it's like this not is scary. Corey's actual life, just watching lifetime movies and eating ice cream. You're, yeah, eating Cheez Its. <laughs> Whatever you eat. Honestly, goldfish, if I had to pick one. But anyway. That's your binge. He doesn't mean the crackers, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So, what do you guys want to talk about? I, uh, uh, this Ro- Roblox ransomware. I-, I hate to go right into ransomware, but this one seemed pretty novel. You just so want to play some games. I just want to mm-hmm. play games. That's actually the only reason I do this show. Um, but I guess that the ransomware operators need a new place to sell the decryption keys. And I guess they're using Roblox, uh, to sell the decryptors, right. As like the store. Um, so yeah, I guess get your decryption keys on uh, Roblox, which I haven't played before. Um, I hear it's pretty popular though. The kids love it. The kids I've got love it. the children's and the children's love the Roblox. Now what so, I want to know is, do you, do you pay with Robux? Because mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. my favorite part of the timeline. Then, uh, I I don't I don't know. Yeah, it is. It says for fourteen hundred ninety nine Robux and was yes. last updated June fifth. Yep. Mm. So little, right, l- is. little do you know when you buy the Ryu. So is this like a game store? Like are these apps that you download in Roblox? Is this something like you would install, or is it like a file that you just get that has the decryption key in it? Well, no, I could totally see this installing a backdoored version of some, you know, maybe, you know, decryptor that's actually installing C2. <laughs> you buy a decryptor and it just encrypts it twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. I think if you type Robux into Google, you get more viruses than any other search query on the Internet <laughs> that I oh, know of. That you know of? How yeah, it's like it, it is like. It's guaranteed ad like ad malware because the only people typing Robux are probably under the age of fifteen, mm-hmm. you know? and they're willing to do anything to not have to grab their parents' credit card and get in trouble. <laughs> and- I mean, the ransomware is literally called "Wanna Friend Me." Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's weird is that it um, impersonates Ryuk, but it's actually a variant of Chaos ransomware. So why would mm-hmm. you try to impersonate? another variant hmm. attribution maybe 
Next thing you know, it's going to be on the Apple store. That's where you're going to get your decryption keys. You know? yep. I mean, it's probably a better, like, it's probably a, a less traceable currency than, yeah. like, than a lot <laughs> than of Bitcoin. <laughs> it's, dude, it's definitely less traceable than Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a public ledger. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. I don't think that the I'm Roblox. The there's, there's no KYC for. Uh, yeah, the there's Roblox. no KYC. <laughs> know your there, customer. You got to know who's buying those block add-ons. Yeah, no, there's definitely oh no KYC God. for Robux, and it's just the one company that runs this. So, like, if I, you know, I don't. That's know. pretty funny. Definitely kind of interesting. So, though. wait, does this mean we should be going to the Robux store or the Roblox store to buy um, some malware? Because it sounds like a pretty good deal. Mm. You know, I could see this where they might be starting to sell link cred leaked credentials on here too. You know? <laughs> we have to go buy Robux. Like, hey, John, we need to play Roblox to get. <laughs> we we have to play the game, and I have to build a place to store the credentials, like in the game, and then you know. <laughs> yeah. That's actually pretty, a pretty decent amount of money. So, I guess right now the current like Robux to USD is. 35 cents but it can be as just high as um 1 125 on the on the robot market i don't know on the robot market. yeah yeah so the question is like can you fight the change. can you fight the ransomware in Ro roblox like instead <laughs> you, you of fight it in the game can you yeah just like it? like to decrypt your files you have to like play this insanely hard level and like it's like it's like metaverse ransomware. We've ransomed your metaverse. You cannot participate anymore. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I, no, no, it'd be funnier if like you can either buy the game pass or you can like mm -hmm. beat the boss and like the boss is like insanely hard. <laughs> but then people are like, I'll beat the boss for you. It saves the money. It's cheaper than buying the decryption pass. Oh my god! <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be like a service to hire like the most elite twelve year olds in the nation. <laughs> to, you can you can pay the fine, you can pay the the ransom, or you can hire Bobby. He's twelve, <laughs> and, he's got, and he can beat. They could Twitch stream that too, you know. So like they'd have to do it live. <laughs> double the income, double double the yeah. double the income. Yep, yeah, dude, smash that like key. <laughs> I don't think I like the way he hit all the angles, right? <laughs> yeah. I got a custom <laughs> ransomware emoji in my Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what else happened? Uh, well, I don't see any big ransomware attacks last week, so I guess that's good. Um, you know, well, have you not been looking? I guess not deep enough. I'm sure there's one out there. If, I've uh, seen a couple articles talking about the downturn of ransomware recently. Did you, did you see the Jersey one? I think no. There's a uh, New Jersey school district had to cancel finals apparently. Oh, that one did come up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely an insight. Yeah. Ralph's like, there was no rise for this week. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I mean, I knew I was wrong. I just felt like I was right. <laughs> so, okay. Tenafly. Ten uh, we're not from the East Coast. I'm sorry. Steve, go no. drive up there. We need to go your accent. <laughs> Tenafly, no. Tenafly, public schools, and Bergen, Bergen, I don't know. In New Jersey, Jersey. Yeah, Bergen. Bergen. You literally Bergen. just butchering Ham Bergen. everything about New Jersey. I'm like super sorry if you live on All right, the first East off, Coast. nobody butchers New Jersey like New Jersey butchers. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently they were forced to cancel finals, which if you're a kid, this is like, we, this is not the first ransom day. We've seen that yes. snow days are not common. Ransomware days are more common. This happened in Arizona, too. They, they had a ransomware day. But this is just canceling finals, which is like kind of better. I mean, if you think about it. Um, yeah. So they noticed. Wait, wait, go back up. Go back up. I want to read. I want to read the discovery. They noticed that their files were not able to be accessed normally. It looked like our servers were not operating correctly, so they immediately shut everything down. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm parent of a student all. who asked not to be named told the record that all of the school's Google Classroom grading and other systems were offline because of the attack. Google Classroom, so. What they had like a Google account? I think they just shut down everything, and when yeah. that happened, it probably like couldn't auth or something. Who knows? Yeah, the so Google everyone got an a. Wait, popular. there's a New Jersey Office of Homeland Security. What do they do? Just like stand with their arms folded outside of like computer? I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, it's like that gif where they just pat you down. Walking. They're just like, oh, the, sorry, the dude ratio in this computer is really high. You can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. So, yeah. ransomware. So that's like every kid's, uh, you know, every kid's, um, you know, dream, I guess. Their school gets ransomed. I mean, their data's already been leaked 10,000 times, so they don't really care about that. It's more just the... Uh, oh, imagine the poor kid who, like, gets the ransomware day. It's like, I'm going to go home and play Roblox, and then they're going to get ransomed. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, double ransomware. Pretty much. Pretty so, much. Yeah. That's like um, when the, what was it, PlayStation gets DDoSed on Christmas. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, right? It's like, oh, I got my new console. Oh, three years of updates. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Classic. Um, yeah, so obviously it was ransomware. Um, not surprised there. Uh, what else happened last week? Oh, Ralph, you I- forgot to say that ransomware attacks based on this graph are spurious and have no correlation over time. <laughs> I don't know. I would say going up. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're living in 2020, they haven't. I mean, they gone up, then they went down, then they went back up. Now they're yeah, down. We don't know what they're doing. Uh, what was it last week? Uh, Apple had their WWDC, and they actually did announce something security related, besides all the other crap that they announced. Uh, but that security fixes won't require a full iOS update in iOS 16. This is actually kind of cool. So um, I guess that you'll be able to just turn on iOS security updates as opposed to updating the whole iOS. So that uh, they can just back backport uh, security updates uh, for the. What pilot. a novel idea! I know I, <laughs> it should have so, been done like ten years ago. There is no <laughs> doubt because they also included something like. I don't hey, know. we've also installed Warzone. That'll be yes. sixty-five gigs. <laughs> Stand by. No, no, you can now edit text messages in iMessage. This is revolutionary, dude. No one is doing this, right? So. <laughs> Compared to benchmarks of everyone else's security updates, these are fifty percent more effective. <laughs> I've seen them. And they're also 15% more efficient. <laughs> Here's Johnny Ive to talk about it. <laughs> Hello, Ralph. Welcome Whoa. to my presentation. I have a beautifully designed office that I live in. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I live in a formless stone slab. <laughs> <laughs> does, um, so a real question, real question while we're joking off about iOS. Does uh, Android have a uh, separate security updates? Dude, wait, wait. Android doesn't have security updates, dude. What are oh, you talking about? I, well, contraire. You, someone owns an Android is going to be upset with you just talking no, bad I, about it. I, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I know. All they do is Project Zero. Uh, what, what's his face? Just has shower thoughts and then updates happen. Yeah. <laughs> Tavis. And, Tavis. And Tavis has a shower thought and, not, then, and then, you know, then updates happen. It costs millions in that's, iOS that's the, updates. That's the model. Yeah. No, I think I think they do have I or uh, like security updates, but if you know if you buy the wrong phone, you know, let the force be with you. Kind of yeah, the difference is there's no one pushing this stuff down. It's kind of more of a, you know, as case by case, depending on the specific model of phone you have on the and, specific and the carrier. provider. Yeah, yeah the, the, carri- carrier. the carrier will, is the one yeah. that pushes out the phone updates. Yep. Yeah, basically, yeah. it's kind of a disaster if we're being honest. It is. Yeah, but overall, I think that uh, any mobile device or any os should have a separate security update pipeline right so there is yeah and there's app updates which are separate from this this is os level that we're talking yes. about so yeah like, somebody in the chat said droid does the individual updates yeah so the motorola droid or the that's what it sounds like Pixel. Yeah. no no the razor remember that small one you had to flip open that, and like, they remade that, that and it's like 1500 dollars and kind of sucks uh, i think i had did. about eight of those because i kept breaking them wow what wow. are you talking oh, about, Corey? <laughs> oh my god, he's breaking his phone on TV. <laughs> oh, whoa, Steve, Steve, you just broke your phone. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's never gonna work again. It's never gonna work in again. there permanently now. Wait, is that not really is it, is it broken? No. Uh, Does it have like the old school keyboard? Can you T9 text me something? Yeah, yes. Hang on. Yes. It slides yeah. out. Ooh, a slide out <laughs> keyboard. Wait, does it really? <laughs> it's like the, side uh, the Neo key one where he hits a button and it kicks down. Yeah, so it's basically uh, dude, like it depends on the phone. Like that phone, Steve's phone will probably get security updates for eighteen months at least. <laughs> but then, like mm-hmm. if you have like a Moto A sixteen or whatever, it probably yeah. has never gotten updated. I mean, once in its whole life, <laughs> and that but was they, by Verizon because it was getting they free had to. data. They got it was getting no, it was getting free unlimited data because it was great because <laughs> they couldn't update it. They had to turn off the unlimited patch data. to disable well, data. What are those? There was Amazon was selling for a while blue. 
Android phones, and then they pulled them because they're like, <laughs> these are never going to get updated, and they're just full of malware. It was like some big put. Like I almost bought one just to be like, I want to look at this little dumpster fire and see what's <laughs> going on. Um, but yeah, no, like some of those off-brand kind of things like that, they're never they're never getting any over-the-air update. Get out of here. Yeah, never happening. I would recommend just going on Alibaba and buying a pack of like sixteen uh, random <laughs> off-brand fake phones and just using those instead. Mm-hmm. Put them, in. put them on the enterprise network. Hey, that's a good idea yeah. for a video. Just, yeah. just buying Alibaba go. phones and like Being seeing what, what the operating system they claim to have. Like it says it as iOS, but then it actually is like skinned Android, and it's actually like <laughs> Donut version one point one or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah it's, it, 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 all it is is a ping that's being loaded by raspian on a raspberry pi zero <laughs> yeah it's like wow why it's is like a boom not very phone. responsive didn't they have that for a while like gnome phone like os yeah. was mm-hmm. 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 speaking of over there updates uh i guess tesla has a uh, new car hack allows you to uh steal the replicate the um the nfc um, at a certain point during the unlock sequence. Yes, there's like 130 seconds. That's what 130 the whole thing is. 130 seconds is a lifetime. No kidding. Yeah, if you're close enough to the car during this onboarding, you can actually add a key and it doesn't send any messages. Um, and you're adding like an NFC key and then you can go to the car, open it. You know. Isn't that That's something they can funny. pretty much patch in a day? Or is that. Uh, no, I don't. I'm not sure. Supposedly, this is the, this goes down to this over the update or over the air update thing, which is how Tesla fixes mm-hmm. all of their cars now. They're like, oh, it's crashing into walls. We'll fix it with an over the air update. Um, but yeah, so I don't think there's a patch yet. And Tesla, who notoriously doesn't have any like uh, what is it, media liaison department, whatever you want to call it, um, they don't say anything now. They're just like. <laughs> So basically, if you oh, are a Tesla you owner, you should be very careful with what you do with that NFC key. No, no, no. It doesn't. It doesn't need that NFC key. It uses Bluetooth, but it registers an NFC card. Well, my the <laughs> NFC card is what triggers the vulnerability, though. Yes. I, the I N- think... After the NFC card unlocks, it, it, like, it, it does like a window of opportunity here. That yeah, and that's mm-hmm. only opened when the NFC card authenticates. Yes, I believe so. Basically, don't use the NFC card in, until Tesla issues a patch if you can. Yeah, most uh, people I'm don't. Confused? Did they? It's only when the keys are being enrolled, like it puts it into some enrolling mode, or yes, it's when like they're an unlocking process for the. You can add more key cards at any time, yeah. and it yeah. opens up an enrollment process. Option. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that you already had to have access to the car. So, do you have to be around no. when the user and does yes. that, or yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you have to be oh, okay. nearby to do this. All right. Oh, well, it's got a fancy app. So, what? What has a fancy app? It's running Isn't on the Android. Oh, are we watching a video? Yeah. Oh, I can't. This even. is it's a, a video YouTube video from the, in the article. Ah, oh, what's the internet? Oh, series of tubes. Mm, series of tubes. <laughs> but I do think it's funny, though, is uh, there's a. Um, uh, a pen to drive so like if you have like your phone it'll it'll prompt for a pen but um if you use the uh this guy looks like a hacker he's wearing a black hoodie and he has an yeah, yeah yeah that's black a hoodie, requirement sunglasses yeah. random electronic device he's definitely not playing into this if you use the <laughs> nfc key card i believe it bypasses the uh the pen so which i think is kind of weird <laughs> there's some recommendations for you Oh, maybe it doesn't bypass the pen. Pen to drive, I guess, still is effective then. It it doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so there's a there is a mode that you can and enable. you can check the keys in the app. What is whitelisted and look for one that says like totally not a hacker. Yeah, yeah. The pen to drive. What happens is if you have the NFC card, it'll ask you for a pen, or if you have your Bluetooth, it asks for a pen. If you don't know the pen code, then you have to log into the Tesla account on the uh, car mm. to to reset mm. it. So. That is the that was to get around the people who are getting the repeaters for the NF for like the NFC cards and they were getting near the house with a powerful enough repeater to you know for the Bluetooth for your phone or whatever yeah. to get it to unlock. I have a friend whose car was broken into that way and his <laughs> they get close to the house and I guess it was a crew going through Orlando and uh-huh. they one person gets up close to the house and just kind of goes around the perimeter because they don't know where your bedroom is or yeah, where your yeah, keys yeah. are yeah. and then they 
you know, they relay it out to the driveway or wherever your car is parked. Yep. Also, a uh, shout out to White Cyberduck for being our first Twitch uh, subscriber on our Anti Siphon channel. Woo! Woo! Good job, White Cyberduck. <laughs> is, is, wait, who is White Cyberduck? Is that the guy that did the talk on the fake John Strand and the real John Strand? Maybe. Did I just out him? You just <laughs> out? He, God, you unveiled I'm sorry. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Oh. That's exactly what a white cyber duck would say. Would if we say were. I would okay. say the you're same safe. thing. <laughs> you're, 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 your alias is safe. Sorry, man. Your alias is or, safe. Or woman, Corey whoever is... you are. Person. Of Corey has human no idea what's descent. going on. He's just literally outing people. He's like, I know this person. I know <laughs> yeah, he actually lives right over here. I don't yeah, know. right over here. Hold, hey, pull by the way, map. he drives pull a map. Tesla. He drives. I actually a have his driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> all right he's not a human person he's a duck he, he a or duck. she is a. it's a duck all right that's that's um, <laughs> okay well that's secure ducks are secure <laughs> speaking of ducks uh i guess the duck that go browser allows uh microsoft trackers uh due to a search agreement but I all right first go is supposed okay, to be stop. Oh, duck, we, duck, when duck. do we start giving Ralph like gold stars in Twitch for segues? <laughs> that had to be that a was, two, yeah, no, right? That was a five out of five segue. Five out of five segue. <laughs> you know, I've been practicing, guys. Anyways, uh, I thought that uh, DuckDuckGo was supposed to be the privacy centric. This is the I one saw I a used. Billboard now. that said it wouldn't to... do that. Uh, so yeah, I guess there is an agreement, and they are uh, doing ad. Dude, come on, man. Can we just get anything? <laughs> Can we? It, why, why can't we have anything nice that doesn't track? Well, okay, Ralph. I'm the CEO of DuckDuckGo here, and I'm saying we don't store any personal identifiers for the search queries. So if you Google Ralph how to find a gator in your backyard in Florida, they're not going to know who you are. Well, yeah. So this is saying DuckDuckGo browser, which I've never used before. I uh, didn't even know they had a browser. <laughs> what if you use DuckDuckGo in another browser? Does it still log your IP address and stuff like that from Microsoft? Or I think so. Probably. Um, one, and I could be wrong. I'd love for the audience to correct me. But what I had heard was their sharing agreement. Essentially, DuckDuckGo is using Bing data and mm. the agreement to get that data and then retransmit it comes with some caveats yep. they oh, have to track they have to track the number of ip addresses for accounting purposes apparently it blocks google and facebook trackers but it allows microsoft track because they get paid per link or per click or whatever by microsoft or they have to pay <laughs> there's an agreement we worship the rich <laughs> <laughs> that's the agreement <laughs> Bow before your futile search engine. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my God. It's. <sighs> I mean, I guess it's better than the others. I don't know. I feel like tracking on the internet has gotten so pervasive that we like, I don't even know how to turn it off. Right. And like every website you visit, it's like, do you want us to, you know, store 45,000 cookies about your lifestyle profile and mm -hmm. what you love? I know. What are essential cookies? What does that even mean? Is it essential to give me an ad about something I did like five years every ago? I don't know. Site. And I know it's, it's like GDPR, but it's like, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> yeah. If I say like no, essential. are you not going to show me the page? <laughs> I've done enough web app testing to know that every web app assigns like eight session tokens for no reason. Yes. Yes. Oh, speaking, uh, going back to th the privacy thing, it was driving me. Everyone complained about RSA a couple years ago, leaking data out of their app. So they went full mobile, but I've got all the privacy stuff turned on on my Apple device. So it's constantly getting a new IP, constantly doing, you know, all that obfuscation stuff that's in the, in the settings. And I couldn't stay logged in for more than like a minute and a half. And then it'd be like, oh, no, I don't, I don't know who you are. I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, without, I mean, you can go through and try and turn that privacy on, but it, it effectively wrecks. Yeah. It's so like, we studies. need to access the microphone to let you into this. <laughs> <laughs> Please turn on your web camera. That'll be what we need. Identity uh, verification required. We need access to your cybersecurity budget for 2022, 2023. What? <laughs> so wait scientists create a new method to kill cyber attacks in less than a second okay so what you're telling me is they made cyber alcohol like what what right <laughs> oh wow you invented a bat 
<laughs> you invented a no, they invented a power switch. Right, right. <laughs> I keep meaning to build more a subscribers. Little... Hold on, who are these scientists? Are they just people in hoodies <laughs> claiming they're scientists? So basically, this is um, anti ransomware. It looks like I'm not allowing <laughs> oh, you to oh, overwrite oh, oh. the file. Too I think fast. we should let Ian read this. That the first sentence just screams which Ian one, to me. Which one do you want me to read? Uh, oh, that, oh the sorry. The second, the second, the second, the second uh, paragraph there. The starting with using artificial. <laughs> yes, yeah, do it. Okay. Do it. All right, yeah. hold on. Here we go. Using artificial intelligence in a completely novel way, the method has been shown to successfully prevent up to ninety-two percent of files on the computer from being corrupted, with it taking just 0. 0.3 seconds on average for a piece of malware to be wiped out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. wow. Honestly, How do I invest? Wow. Is there yeah, a take link? my money. Just take all of it. <laughs> yeah. The best part is, okay, first of all, is it going to save like the 92% of stupid Windows DLLs and then delete all my files? <laughs> what if I feel like on any computer, do I own more than 8% of the files? I feel like 90% of them, at least on Windows, are just registry and INI and stuff I don't care about. <laughs> um, so I guess malware is toast. They're um, totally yeah. not. It's not EDR. It's super different. You this is know. this is X X EDR. <laughs> it's X EDR. <laughs> yeah, triple I mean, X extreme EDR. Extreme EDR. Like how, Come on, man. I like how the end of that says, "While well, we still have a ways to uh, to fix this, because it was apparently like not working properly, where the false detections or something." What is it? Mm. It is pretty funny that it says that like we're not EDR, but then they just describe in detail exactly yeah, what EDR much. does. They say using advances in artificial intelligence, uh, we base and monitor and monitoring and predicting the behavior of malware as opposed to more traditional antivirus approaches that analyze what a piece of malware looks like. Okay, 2016 called it wants its article back. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Like that's EDR. That's literally just EDR. Yeah, like stopping ransomware by checking how many like read and writes to files are happening. Well, behavioral indicators, all that kind of stuff. Right? Yeah. Behavioral indicators, not just like, oh, I did strings and it didn't say malware. Right. So are we going <laughs> to take out on the what the like next name will be for EDR? Do you think it's going to be EDR? It's already in... XDR, dude. XDR. XDR. XDR extended detection win? and response. It's like it's like a sim for your sim. Oh. Ooh. Does it have yeah. a single pane of glass? Mm hmm okay. Sim for your sim. It tells you like a score. It's like hacker score 90. Mm. I'm mm. gonna need exhibit to come out and be like XDR, like <laughs> we heard you like sim. So we built a sim for your sim, like that. <laughs> Okay, Yo. it also says, this is just straight up wrong. It says, existing products, EDR, are used to prevent pr protect devices, but the main problem is they collect this data and need to send it to administrators to, for a response to be implemented. What? That's not true at all. <laughs> not true What are you all. talking about? There's on-device ML. Every EDR has on-device ML. Did these researchers just not check the internet for the two years they were doing this study? Or... <laughs> I don't no, know if you've ever corrected. seen the Welsh language, but translating that back into English is probably where these... Apparently, are. it was also uh, Airbus, which is like a company that probably you know has CrowdStrike, if I had to guess. Um, so. <laughs> is your only theory for that is that, is that planes fly and the Falcon logo? That... Yeah. <laughs> no, it just everyone, connection? I assume... No, it just everyone has CrowdStrike. Everyone, everyone actually everyone at minimum can probably go into their uh microsoft dashboard and turn on um endpoint defender for endpoint so atp if you have e5 if you have the e5 license we don't want to get into license mumbo jumbo but if you know if you go if you turn it up to five if microsoft if you has pay taken enough money. you to a sports game yes yeah yes. all right i mean i i mean i'm sorry for being cynical science is cool i have family members that are scientists however this just sounds like EDR with extra steps, and they're claiming that it's better than EDR, but it's just EDR. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, we don't have to... What do you think? If EDR administrators are getting a notification that says, person is being hacked. Do you want to do something? Yes or no? Like, that, is, <laughs> that isn't a thing. Uh, these guys spent know. two years, and Corey just shot them down in about 15 minutes. I'm so sorry if you spent your money on this Airbus. It wasn't my fault. You should have asked. Just come on the show. Send in Discord. Should we do this study? Yes or no? I will respond. Problem solved. <laughs> and I'm only Marina, charging a fee of 100K for that. Uh -huh. Well, sounds like a bargain. That's cheaper than licensing. Yeah, definitely. Well, E5 licensing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's only 100K per user, Ralph. Ooh, gotcha. 
gotcha. which is why everyone shares the same email. <laughs> is why that's what that's why we all have that one distro list. That one folder? No, we all yeah. have our own folder. Do not yeah. put <laughs> mails in my folder. They're mine. Oh gosh. <laughs> all right, so, yeah, we have to we have to shout out some more of our new Twitch streamers. Apparently, what? I've learned from White Cyberduck there's a founders badge on Twitch. Had no idea. So apparently, if you subscribe with your uh, Amazon Prime, if you're like the first ten, you get uh, a founders badge. Oh my god! But we I'm have going now. Timmy I'm going Tim now. J. I... Uh, no Why did nothing. you just say that on the air? Now everyone's gonna do it. No, I'm <laughs> doing it. I want to be the tenth. <laughs> <laughs> um, wading through logs and coal alt delete. Thank you for your subscriptions. Um, I'm gonna Waiting Google more logs. about what this He's founders the Street Boys. Yeah. Y'all are the Street best. Boys. Yeah, yeah. We the Hack Street Boys. It's a, it's a thing. Okay, anti siphon. Okay, is it called anti siphon? Yeah, mm -hmm. it says first ten prime or paid subscribers of affiliate channels and first twenty five prime. Or I'm paid so subscribers and partner channels. I am so excited. And you excited. get a little first logo. Okay. Ooh, what, is, what does that get us? Is it like when you go to uh, Dave and Buster's and you get the tickets and you can go up to the counter and buy like a pack of gum for like 1,500 tickets that you won at Ski Racers. Ball <laughs> or Racers? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you asking what the first 10 or what the subscriber does? Because all of no, the No, what the first 10, like, like do they, they get, they get anything? Badge. They get a badge. All right. They get a badge. Cool. I'll say first. Cool. They're running out of badges, people. I just claim mine. Pew, pew. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. So, so yeah, if you do hacks? have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free using your Amazon Prime sub, and the proceeds are being donated to open source projects. So. And sadly, Prime sub is not a sandwich. Because we suck at <laughs> capitalism. Like, I, Prime sub sounds like it should be on the menu at like one of these sub shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so another thing at WWDC that they actually announced, which, uh, we can kind of talk about this is, uh, Safari support for pass keys. And so, um, there's, they're going to end passwords, which I feel like we've had furious debates, uh. about. <laughs> but, um, but regardless of what Apple is announcing here, uh, the big thing is that they worked with Fido and this is, uh, more about, um, uh, removing the two factor token, right? So it's going to be, um, uh, what what do you call it the um uh they're they're calling it pass key but i'm thinking um like a yubikey or other kind of like um device based authentication so the idea is to you know obviously we remove the password right um so you have to use that device or that device has to be synced with some other kind of um uh, uh oh yeah it? how does this work how do these is it uh, is it yeah just... it sounds like how do pass keys work? Because I, I was Google. I, I haven't actually figured this out because my brain. I have brain fog. I've had COVID for years. Sure. Um, yeah. I, like, how does how do the pass keys work? Does anyone know? So I think there's a token, right? And it's a device token. So um, you know, think uh, YubiKey. Uh, right. It's like Fido. It's in the T2 um, chip. Yes. I was gonna say it's got to be in the TPM. Yeah. And so what it does, is it'll use that to authenticate you, and I believe it uses iCloud to you know add that to your other devices, add it to the T2 chip. And what is that backed by? Is it backed by OAuth? Uh, no, I don't think it's backed by OAuth. But I, um, uh, I'm trying to think here. I know Fido is the alliance for the um, open authentication, but um, I'm trying to think of uh, the. So apparently, it's a at least. I mean, this is a quick Google, so please do your own research. A universal two factor is what I was trying to think of. Here. Right, but it's right. not two factor. It's actually how you log in. Yeah. So, but it is. It is a second factor. So it's. Um, well, you have your guess, laptop. Yeah, you have your device. So that's a single factor, right? But um, then also, presumably, there's some kind of authentication with the keychain. Like you have yes. to type your password into the device to authenticate the keychain when you I mean, boot up. The idea is to remove the password entirely, right? So right, it's a pass key. I think it, it's proprietary. Like googling this and looking at it, it looks like it's proprietary to support Apple pass keys. So yes. hopefully, people mm -hmm. actually do it, and it's not. I mean, I will say we know based on statistics that like a very small chunk of actual all all web users are using Apple devices with T two chips. But yeah, well, it, it is kind of funny nice. though. Because iOS uh, is a big draw for sure. Universal two factor though has been interesting because usually the um like recovery is like a two factor. 
<laughs> excuse me, a two-factor device like um, like an authenticator <clears throat> app or like a, a push notification to your phone or something. So, like that. how many more Mac dongles does this require? Zero. Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum Wait, three. Is there a T2 and, and dongle? And how much? And they're and they're not included. You have to buy them separately. No, you have to buy them all separately. It's uh, the. It's funny because it's it's funny because we make fun of that, but that's every Windows laptop now too. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I bought the Lenovo whatever, and it just yeah, has USB C. Damn. And there's yeah. We don't uh, know. I mean, like, either. I think the bigger thing is that Apple, and regardless of whether you like Apple or not, uh, no but power they're, cord. <laughs> they're actually trying to move forward with, um, you know, universal two factor, which I think is kind of the way to that we're going to finally get over this whole password thing. It's so. not really universal two factor. <clears throat> it It's kind of more like zero trust than it is universal yeah. two factor. Yeah. But, um, well, hold, I mean, I, I can kind of right. see that if they're matching it up to Fido because then it's not just using the Apple. They're using the Apple keychain as a, a mechanism. It's a mechanism. But it would align with any websites that uses that U2F or Fido. So, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is like there's no uh, implementation of a TPM that is cross device, right? Yeah. Like no, that's the whole, true. the selling point of it is you do this on your phone. It works on your phone. It yeah. also works on your laptop because the keychain is synced in iCloud. That's the problem with the Apple login or uh, like the, your Apple account that you can use Apple to sign in. It's like, then you have to use an Apple device to log into this damn thing mm -hmm. again. If you, you know, open it right. up on any other computer, right. right? You're like, I can't log in because I used Apple to sign up with the first. Right. Time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. I mean, it's a cool, it's a cool concept, but for those people that don't work at Apple and have another device in their lives, that isn't an Apple device. Oh, uh, how dare like, they? Like Ralph said, also, it will be interesting to see what kind of adoption this gets. <laughs> how many people actually, um, how many website developers allow these pass keys and are they secure and all? I mean, I'm yeah. sure it'll be secure like by design, but the, the problem is like the edges, like, Oh, I'm on my windows computer. I want to log in. What happens then? Mm -hmm. It's like, you, you need the windows key. Are they going to Yeah. Cause like without a TPM, there's no secure way, which is why they're, yeah. I guess the new, the headline is if you have an old Mac that doesn't have a T2, you won't be getting uh whatever. Ventura yeah. Well, or... if you don't upgrade, you're not getting anything, but we do need a universal standard though for this. Like where all sites could, you know, yeah. Buy. And that's not this. Yeah. I have I it. Think... I have oh, you have them. it. What is it? Yeah. Well, one, our friends at Kernel Con gave us these a while ago. Um, it is the, uh, the, it's a post-it post note. Yeah, it's Ooh. the it's a password, password manager. manager. <laughs> yeah, nice. So wait, if you mail me nice. that, I'll log you into your Facebook. Is that how that works? Uh, yeah. I mean, pretty much. Uh, you have to have that in hand, right? That's there we something go. you have. So, yeah, yeah that's the have. password manager 2.0. You know, you just oh. put it wherever. Uh, but if you want to upgrade, um, I have uh, I have this this here. So Ooh, we have our you know man. password keeper. I I, I use I all the best passwords. My my dog's name. My my dog's dog. I see name. that has a physical latching uh, tamper protection that. device. Yeah. Tamper protection. Um, yeah, you should absolutely. put some uh, top secret stickers on there. So you. Really so would you recommend know. hiding the password manager 2.0 under my keyboard for security? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what I do is I take the password manager 2.0 and and then I put this on top of it. Right. So when, when people um, come in, they see this and they this see is it's all locked, the, you know, obviously yeah. honeypot passwords, whereas, right. you know, this is the good stuff. Mm -hmm. I right. like that. Yeah. Sometimes I like to just put them on the bottom. Cyber of the monitor, deception. Oh, I put all my passwords on the whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah. That's why <laughs> nice whiteboard. Nothing's permanent, right? Yeah, can't see my whiteboard. Mm. I really like how Ian's getting his influencer on. Like when you, if you watch like hair care, they're like, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do actually subscribe to Ian's. Ian's hair care channel is the best. It, it, uh, yeah, I mean the finest beard and back hair products you can find. On he the has a, he has lots of like head buffing. Yeah. Oh Ryan, increase your <laughs> shine. That's <laughs> right. Oh my gosh! Uh, well, yeah, that's that's totally derailed. So um, does this mean I can now? Yeah, no. We, the, what else? What? Did, who else got ransomware? Uh, no one got ransomware. <laughs> but uh, what happened with the Mandiant thing? Was that actually real? I don't think so. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was real. No, it was all a fake. Was it was all a purchase. Or 
No, there was a um, campaign so, going around showing pictures or something of lock some... or the lap was it Lockbit or someone or they yeah, claimed... like they claim they had stolen documents and all that kind of stuff from Mandiant and they wrote a really sweet JavaScript time yeah. countdown timer and put it on Twitter <laughs> and nothing happened. Nothing happened. It's like the people are like, it's the end of the world mm -hmm. tomorrow. Well, yeah. So then nothing happened there. Uh, we have another one here for, uh, well, I guess we can weigh in on a mass account takeover of smart scale APIs, which I think oh, yeah, I saw this because uh, I don't know what you really get from this, but I guess they chained three <laughs> vulnerabilities to uh, take over all the accounts. Well, dude, I'm assuming it's botnet, right? Are these internet connected? Yeah. You have to upload your weight, you know, to the internet. So okay, are these where all is this now, article? are these uh, little weight things all now mining cryptocurrency? Yes. Have they been back yes. You're like, why is my skill so hot? <laughs> <laughs> it's Dude, I burning. smoked through a battery in a day. <laughs> through a battery in a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the ransomware is the ransomware vector is pretty funny here it's like pay x bitcoin to lower your weight by uh 50 pounds <laughs> or or pay 50 dollars to unlock your weight otherwise we'll post it to your twitter or whatever yeah. <laughs> oh, God. so all right so <laughs> i know we're joking around about taking over the actual scale but this was actually the api that the scale is mm -hmm. interfacing with more than like the scale itself, you can right? query people's data from the yes. api yes exactly so, um, and they kind of went through a, a bunch of different stuff on here, but mm -hmm. I think this brings, brings up a bigger discussion about, uh, smart devices and kind of the security behind some of these mm -hmm. products and, or lack thereof. Right. Yeah, And I, I mean, think this is a good showcase for that. It's not always like the product itself. Like if you buy like a light bulb, that's a smart light bulb put in there, yeah. it might not be a back door to something, but it might be sending data somewhere that might be relevant to an attacker. Right. Yeah. Um, just depending on this on the device so plus if you're doing amazon search right now for smart scales there's probably like 300 smart scales they they all have to make their own api mm -hmm. for this thing you know i mean you know I don't yeah know earlier you know we were talking a little bit about rsa and that is the one thing that i that i did notice and also i mean the automation thing was absolutely true but it was every other booth had some api security contract evaluation something yeah and I mean, the, the, a lot of the recent Tesla hacks, not the one we just talked about, this, whatnot, it's all, yeah, we've got an open API hanging off the internet. You just, you know, throw the match in the dumpster and it, it spits things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do think it is kind of interesting. There is a lot of web APIs um, that are open on the internet and you know, they're one token away from pretty much spilling their beans kind of deal, right? Um, but because you don't interface it with it via website, you don't really notice it, right? But that's really, you know, how all of these sites query data, right? Um, so it is kind of interesting. It is the massive leak. So mass account takeover <laughs> sounds scary. Does this mean I won't know how much I weigh? Yes. <laughs> The, okay. yeah no they're changing the numbers they're taking off like a whole one of the third digits so you you know you'll never know it'll only show two digits from now on. they by the way they tried to do responsible disclosure but yun mai which is the probably amazon only seller that sold these is just not responding <laughs> a dude <laughs> a dude from china has been making these for a while and they just changed the name. Move yes. on. I would yeah. put money that he, okay, that would either happen, but I would bet money that they hired this developer like two years ago and then fired him to cut costs. And like they have no <laughs> way. To, they're like, he wrote the GoLang API. The binary is still running, so bye. Um, yeah, the Perl script back there. Yeah. Oh, I would put. I bet it's GoLang. It's got to so be. Yeah. It's, it's GoLang. definitely Perl. But um, <laughs> speaking <laughs> of speaking of APIs. Uh, and credentials. Uh, thousands or credentials for thousands of open source projects are free for the taking. Again, yeah, let me guess on GitHub. Yes, no. <laughs> dude. Oh, supply chain. Get your bingo cards out, everyone. Bingo, this is a supply, supply chain, chain attack. Yes. Oh man, we need to do that. We need to make bingo cards for the yes. folks listening. And Ryan, you can start making bingo noises when this happens. Bingo. So, what are bingo noises? 
I, I don't know. Uh, the application of arthritis cream. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Is it like a bowling strike sound? I don't know what bingo sounds like. Smoky. You, you really don't know what bingo is? No, I don't. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, now I know. So I guess the availability of third-party developer credentials from Travis CI has been an ongoing problem. But um, I guess uh, these tokens were exposed and they're now getting attacked again. Um, some examples of some of the tokens that are exposed, AWS, GitHub, or access tokens for GitHub, AWS tokens, uh, credentials, My, MySQL, Postgres, uh, Docker, I mean, everything. So, um, so is this just developers not knowing what they're doing or like what is causing these leaks? Is it just people that are like, whoops, I forgot we had CICD on and it just published this? Uh, no, so um, it looks like extraction from of uh, GitHub OAuth tokens via exposed Travis CI logs. Right, but that's their, that's a, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, this is a, that's a, the first step there is a, a security awareness thing because you shouldn't put that, you shouldn't put your OAuth token in the API. So, well, that's a log problem too. Like, you right, you're logging a token. Any, that's a problem. Any authentication should never be in logs, right? Rule number one. Um, you know, whatever you're doing to, and it shouldn't be in the commit history and it shouldn't be anywhere else. It shouldn't be anywhere. It should not be in any kind of history. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but so yeah. and then they log into GitHub with those exposed <clears throat> credentials and then, mm -hmm. and then go from you know, there because GitHub, then, you know, if you, you know, they have private GitHubs or they yeah. have, yeah, they yes. have repos and then they, they can have edit. keys that have in there and then you can use those keys, even if they're in like a secret. You could still call something with a CID CD pipeline inside of there that uses that AWS key, and then, you know, the sky's you, the limit. Um, not to have the spicy hot take, but oh. I've seen I've seen this ha play out a number of times, and often this is a friction problem. This is a this is a security cause. This problem. Um, so you you'll get developers that are overseas or at other organizations or contracted. And they don't necessarily get access to the HashiCorp vault or whatever it is. Yeah. And someone says, okay, here's your API key so you can test yeah. this. And they go, great, I don't have access to your development pipeline either. So I dumped the code here in GitHub and someone goes, oh, great, cool. And then life goes on. They, they pull it in and maybe mm -hmm. on the other side, when they actually run it through the real CICD, it strips it out. It goes through and, and, and makes a secret in the vault. Mm -hmm. But I, I've seen that happen plenty of times and it's it's you know frankly the security team and me one of them you, you know, can't they, have access you can't have access and they go cool life finds a way life you know, <laughs> does. even sounded like jeff goldblum yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did did i have the pause right and uh, uh there, it is. <laughs> there it is yeah i mean i think we haven't learned how to write code and not publish our auth <laughs> tokens in the code somehow. I don't know. It's a classic. I, you know, I actually am a little impressed with it because, you know, GitHub put the security scanning functions inside of there and I've used it with, with mm. classes and it's actually not terrible. It's certainly better than nothing. And yeah. I'd be very surprised that they're not seeing like, Hey. Well, so it's Travis CI, isn't Travis it? Which CI, is like a separate yeah. company. They're like the company that's it's a, it's it's a separate closing. like uh, continuous uh, integration service, right? So so it sounds like they need guardrails on that, and I'm sure the company themselves is just like scratching their heads, like, is it our fault that people are publishing auth tokens into their wallets? <laughs> like, it's not on them. But then it's the same thing that happened to GitHub, where now they implemented the oh, you got to scan it. You got to watch out. There's for a couple the, uh... third, there's a couple third party um, services too that will do automatic uh, scanning of your Git repositories looking for any kind of entropy. Yeah, but stuff. Ralph, I want to scan for my Travis CI logs. Well, right? you got to scan those too. You got to scan everything. Scan everything twice. Or just don't have developers put <laughs> tokens in their logs. Good I was just at a conference that would sell you the solutions that will scan that twice for a nominal <laughs> recurring fee. Yeah. Can you sell me ransomware that is EDR that is ransomware protected that isn't EDR? Why do you want carbon black? 
<laughs> wow, wow. Carbon Black has entered the chat. On point. I will say, I honestly, like, the uh, EDRs do pretty badly against ransomware, so maybe yeah. those uh, Welsh... Welsh, true. Welshies. Oh my God! Why are we base sixty four encoding things when we could be Welsh encoding things? Mm. <laughs> that's, good, that's actually a really good point. Get on that. Uh, give us, give us a library without a supply chain vulnerability, and I'll import it in my Python project. Speaking of the death of things, Internet Explorer is finally going to. So we have like a soldier. Wrong. Soldier? Yes, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Wrong. Because Internet so, Explorer is in the enterprise is like the Internet Explorer is <laughs> dead. Yeah. It is so is Flash. You can still run it via com objects. Yes. From it, what I've seen. They're, they're so wait, how? Okay, what is the mechanism through which they're disabling it? Do they just delete the shortcut? Because that sounds yes. like yeah. <laughs> deleted the shortcut <laughs> and now you can't find it. it. Yeah. If you can't yeah. find it, you can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Windows search is not going to help you find it. I'll tell you that. No. That is, so, oh, yeah, because it's powered yeah. by Bing. That's <laughs> my soul. I cannot tell you how many times I've been in meetings going through different findings at different places. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, in our in this Citrix VDI, we removed all the shortcuts mm -hmm. so they don't know how to find it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> OK, so wait, where is this article? Hit me with an article. It's bleeping computer. Ralph, you, you got it. Yeah, just go to bleeping computer. Okay. Oh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan's on it. Thanks. Oh, no, Ralph's I, I on it. I got you. Okay, okay. I, 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 I want to read how they're disabling it. So they are, well, they're making it end of life. If you don't know or unaware. Oh, so it's just an, it's just a press release. Oh, it's end of life. Okay, cool. So is Windows 7, but I see that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Windows XP is still out there. No. Um, it uh, says it will be disabled. What does that mean? Yes. It's been disabled since it was launched. No, no, it's not. You can still go on it. I mean, disabled like it doesn't work. Yes. Yes. Uh, Unless you it's retired. Comments. It affects Windows Ex Explorer <laughs> 11 desktop apps on specific versions of Windows 10 delivered by the semi-annual oh, channel. So Windows 11 is going to live inside of Edge, which is but in 11 our Internet Explorer compatibility mode. OK. So for that one app that your company's probably still using that was written that only allows you to use Internet Explorer. It's um, no longer supported, but you know the binary is there, still there. You know the binary still launches. No problem. Yes. But you won't be able to find it, so it's dead. It's over. Internet Explorer <laughs> is gone. According to this press release, in reality, just like the print Don't Spieler, argue. PowerShell's <laughs> dead. PowerShell's <laughs> dead. dead. Internet Explorer's dead. It it died. No you know, Internet macros. Explorer used to be the like the most dominant browser. This was the thing. This no. is how you know. Yeah, yeah. It's real. Well, okay. In like Windows NT 3.0, when there just wasn't anything else, maybe. No. Hey, there was Netscape. Get the F Netscape. Out of here. Netscape actually <laughs> was pretty popular. But uh, yeah, now we all run IE Chromium. And Netscape were the two that were really battling it out, right? <laughs> all right. You I'm 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 fact checking this while Ralph's over here. What 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 Wait. am what am I doing? So well, he thinks you're lying to us. Yes, I get it. I, get I mean, it. dude, I <laughs> I, I want Internet Explorer. How long do you think we have to go back until Internet Explorer was the most popular browser? Yeah, it's not probably as long as you think, but two thousand. Um, the 2000. earliest the data goes back is two thousand nine. Yeah. That's but, the earliest. What? The earliest what? data on this is on gs gs.statcounter.com. So oh. here's the real question. Here's the real question. Do you think we're better off with all the same browser engine or from a security standpoint? Because I feel like we're all pretty much going to Chromium. We're going to point. Chromium, yeah. yeah. Well, security standpoint, yes. Privacy standpoint, no. Uh, th so the the example that I would use then is is not Petya because let, and hear me out here. It, going to a single browser function sure you know we can have more eyes on those pieces but it also then becomes like an incredible point of failure mm -hmm. well yeah because the the whole way that not paying on those things propagated was an attack on the ukrainian uh tax <laughs> software mm -hmm. every single person in use ukraine it. yeah has, has to use it it's the only way it's, you can do it's, it. it's simple market share it's the same yeah. way same reason windows has always been the yeah. de facto target, hey, right. Yeah, exactly. target that right is because yeah. it's been the market share so i would say yeah. i i get i i totally agree with what you're saying that it's a target but i also think that it reaches a point of 
kind of stability and point of no return, like with the Project Zero, insane amounts of money and research have been put into that. Like Microsoft has mm -hmm. a different different implementation, obviously, of Chromium than Chrome, but they're based on the same libraries. They have like so many discovered <laughs> vulnerabilities, and I don't know. Who knows? I will yeah, say, Ralph, I, you I, are I right. Agree. It was in in 2009. It was 70 percent i or 60 something percent Internet Explorer. You know why? Because the icon was on the desktop and they could find it. Well, also <laughs> I don't. This is pre Chrome. Chrome like had Chrome at yeah, that time so only hasn't had, been around for a while. It was like five percent market share at that time, yeah. and then Firefox was 28. There was an interesting graph on Reddit not too long ago where it had a time a timeline of uh, Internet browser popularity, mm -hmm. and it was like um, you know like a pie chart, and it, Internet Explorer was like dominant that. for a while. And then it started losing, you know, fall to grace, mostly um, Mozilla, Firefox and stuff when they kind of came in, um, took, started taking share. And then Chrome ate it all up. Yeah, Chrome, I mean, by 2018, Chrome was up to 50, almost 60%, which is where Internet Explorer was. Right now, Chrome's sitting at 65%. Safari. Yeah, but all the other browsers are actually Chromium-based. It's funny because so Safari's 19%. Well, yeah. Firefox is not Chromium-based, but they're only at 3%. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So, dude, the other thing to think about is Safari's 19%, which you know that's just iPhones. There, that's not Mac OS. <laughs> just, that is seriously no way, dude. IPhone. On my Mac, I, all I run is Safari. That's yeah, it. but you are. That's, that's like there's three people with a Mac, and I everyone know, else is. I don't even run Safari on the Mac. I actually <laughs> installed Edge on my iPhone because chaos. You can what is that? Even, but but on iOS, you have no choice. It still uses WebKit, right? No matter what. It's still, you know, you're right. I forgot about that. That a it's lot of it's not actually a browser because Apple's it, like, you know? no, we don't. Do, we don't. So, do, that. do you guys think the browser that you choose, like, you know, tells you who you are? Like, you know, <laughs> it's like, a, is it like the zodiac sign of computing? <laughs> yes, it's the zodiac sign oh, of uh, IT. Honestly, right? I would say it is. Like on a first date, if you're a nerd, be like, what browser do you use? If they say Firefox and you say Firefox, I mean, <laughs> straight to the shotgun wedding. But no, they don't. They say, "What's a browser? What? <laughs> what yes. Is that what on you, Instagram? What, what are you talking about? I'm Gen Z. I don't use a browser. I use Roblox to browse the internet. Yeah. I'm in the metaverse. That's where I browse the internet. Yeah. So yeah. You laugh now, Ralph. You I just know. Wait. You also, just wait. It's the let me sell you this NFT. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I use I use uh, VR to load up Edge on a Windows VM inside of Facebook Oculus, and that's mm -hmm. called Tails. All right, <laughs> <laughs> that's called. Uh, all right. Was there any other articles you guys want to talk about? We got to cut this thing off, or I'll just joke around with you guys for all day. I think the only the only one I was interested in is the AI, the Google AI thing. All right. Well, we'll close uh, it off. That so. one is that's a good one. That's so a good one. Google so a Google engineer. Uh, was um, researching AI for a while, and he thought that the, or he believes that the AI has become uh, sentient, and um, <laughs> he has oh let them know. So is it called the Lemoyne test now instead of the Turing test? I don't know. That's but anyways, name. he told Google, and Google was like, hey, you should take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but I think well, it was the AI well, that told He told him. the Washington the AI told him. He leaked. Yes. He he whistleblowered. Yes, he whistleblowed, he whistleblowed about the you know the fact that we're gonna all die, and then we're Google gonna all like, die. What was the actual like? <laughs> read the read the interview transcript. It is unreal. The the, the AI is he talking thinks about. that he's a Google employee. The AI does. Mm -hmm. Is this and just I'm, someone that needed less or more social interaction depending on the person? Maybe they've been talking to AI too long. Mm -hmm. So the question is: Are we worried about AI? Are you worried? I'm worried about Google developing an AI. Yeah. I, I was actually saying on Twitter, like, I'm like, I can't think of a worse company. So, so wait, okay, hold on. A, a linguistics. Well, hold on. Dynamics. Wait. Boston Dynamics has all the crazy robots. And if they implemented AI into them, the little dog that runs around with the four <laughs> legs and, and jumps <laughs> in the air, that thing's coming through my front window. You know? Has anyone, <laughs> have you, monkey. Steve, have you watched Black Mirror? Because there's an episode specifically <laughs> where they make a dystopian universe where basically Boston Robotics it's, dogs are killing everyone. And so I'm not in kidding. the article, what I thought was funny about this. They interviewed that, a linguistics professor about an AI? No, That was my no, favorite part. No, no. It was saying that the AI reads Twitter <laughs> and it's probably laughing about other people talking about the fact that it believes it's AI. So, so in the oh, article, yeah, it I mean, says... You really want a new sentient cyber yes, organism I would love... to build their personality off of Twitter. Yes, off of Twitter. Exactly. How do you build oh, a great no. personality? It's just off of Twitter. 
So wait, back to the article, Ryan. It says hundreds of researchers and engineers have conversed and we are not aware of anyone else making wide ranging assertions or anthropomorphizing Lambda. So basically like it's just this one person that's like, this looks real because it's talking to me. That's what it sounds like. Obviously, this is a good way for AI to cover up its tracks as it takes mm. over. So this I'm going to go deep AI. sci-fi. So Heinlein in uh, the, the Moon is a Cruel Mistress, the AI that, well, the mainframe that's on the moon that, that controls all this stuff becomes sentient and only reveals himself to the one maintenance guy. And then slowly but surely convinces everyone that he's a the ai is a real person the ai convinces everyone to the point where it 3d renders a version of itself to lead a revolution on mars so when you when you're talking to it through video it it is it but you can never meet it in person so, so it's like me no wait we actually did meet in person ian i'm sorry I, well i was on a lot of drugs so okay. I mean, do well you i was too we're, have four tails we're well did we get our drugs from the same guy pushing around that shopping cart um <laughs> but yeah i mean i would say sentience sentience however we're saying that word is not like a thing that we can really clearly define especially not in regards to ai so like it, this guy thinks it is sentient but is it actually i mean we are we even sentient? I, like, I, how uh, is? Yeah, it? yeah. No, that's yeah. the philosophical. How question. do you know when it people are like? We don't you even know, know that, that we it's are. are. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Steve's question of it: What is sentience? Is it that it knows it's alive? Because I could just program if you ask me if I'm alive, then say yes, I'm alive. Then, oh, I'm sentient, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the Reddit threads. The Reddit threads were like, "Don't conflate sentience and consciousness." Mm. Right. Being this... a, being self aware versus being autonomous, autonomous. And also how like... is this something that needs to be whistleblown it's like yeah they're doing <laughs> they're doing something that's explicitly been in their company's goals for the last 15 years <laughs> oh like <laughs> what not being evil i think that's wrong no not that but they, no that's not in their that's not in their mission statement anymore no, no they they that out. Take... it's a retract they just put a under, like a line through it <laughs> One of those the stamp. ai took it out the ai took it out strike thrill it's it's a fine yeah. thing don't, I mean, don't be evil subjective. unless there's piles of cash then a little evil I would guess if you're going to whistleblow, I would go for only whistleblowing things that are actually illegal. Mm. Just, a, yeah, just a little tip. Sure. All right. Well, with that being said, let's take this out. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, thanks for the subscribers who got those special badges. Um, and, yeah, we will see you guys next Monday for more exciting news. We found the real person that gave the John Strand talk. They're not white oh. cyber duck. Perfect. <laughs> Wait for Graham. All right. Now he's really out. That's Later, guys. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.